Today we are going to be going through some math that will teach you how to calculate IV infusion rates for those times when you're infusing IV drugs like heparin or nitroglycerin or dopamine um, for your patients in the simulation lab or your patients in clinical. And so I'm going to show you a way that I was taught a long time ago that helps me to figure out infusion rates because I have very poor math skills. Many of my students have told me that they do too and so this method works for me and hopefully it will work for you too. And so the, um, the problem that we'll be solving today is a problem that answers the question, what should the nurse set the IV pump infusion rate at to deliver the correct dose of drugs? And so the answer that we're trying to find as we do these calculations is the flow rate on the pump. And we'll just abbreviate that, FR. That equals flow rate on the pump. That's the answer we're always trying to get to. And the flow rate on IV pumps, as you know, is always in milliliters per hour. But I want to start with a simpler example first just to demonstrate how this formula works. And let's think about Tylenol. If you have a dose, which we'll abbreviate D, of Tylenol of 325 milligrams ordered, then the other thing that you need to know is what's the strength of the tablets that you have on hand, and we're going to call that concentration. And as you know, Tylenol comes in 325 milligram tablets. Well, if you just put dose over concentration, divide the two, you'll see that you should give one tablet. But Tylenol is not really ordered 325 milligrams, is it? It's actually usually ordered 650 milligrams. We do the same thing, put dose over concentration. Now we see that if you divide 325 into 650, it's not one tablet, it's two tablets. And that little maneuver holds for every calculation that we'll do today. The two things that you always need to know are dose and concentration. Dose always goes on the top and concentration on the bottom. And so here we have the beginnings of our equation, which is flow rate is equal to dose over concentration. But you know that a lot of our drips are ordered by weight, like heparin is ordered in units per kilogram per hour. And some of our other drips are not ordered per hour, but they're ordered per minute, like nitroglycerin, which is ordered in micrograms per minute. And so there are a couple other things that you might need to factor into this equation. And those other things are the patient's weight, which is always done in kilograms. And the other thing um, that you may also need is for uh, dopamine drips, which are ordered mics per kilo per minute, is you may need that little 60 multiplier that changes those minutes that it's ordered in, mics per kilo per minute, into the hours that IV pumps deliver uh, the flow rate in. And so you may need that 60 multiplier. So if we take all of these components, the dose, the concentration, the patient's weight, and that 60 multiplier, and plug them into our equation, what the final equation looks like is flow rate equals dose times weight times that 60 multiplier. If we need these two components, we don't always need them. The other important thing to remember is that the concentration that's on the bottom of your equation always has to be in the same units that's ordered. So for our Tylenol example, we had milligrams and milligrams. And so then we don't have to do any fancy manipulations with the concentration. But sometimes um, we'll start out with a concentration where we'll tell you milligrams and you need to change it to micrograms. If you need to change micrograms to millig or milligrams to micrograms, then what you do is multiply by 1,000 or add three zeros. So let's go through a couple of um, examples and I'll show you how this formula works. For all of our problems today, we're going to say that our patient weighs 75 kilograms. So let's do a heparin one first. Oh, and by the way, in our course, we will always give you the patient's weight. You need to decide if you're going to use it or not. So let's start with a heparin example. Let's say that we have heparin that's ordered at 18 units per kilogram per hour. Now, you have to know always the weight of the patient. The other thing you need to know is what is the concentration of heparin that comes mixed in your heparin bag? And we will always give you that information. So let's say that this heparin is mixed 25,000 units in 500 milliliters. And so when we talk about concentration for these IV drips, I don't want the concentration in how much is in the bag. I need to know how much is in each one of those milliliters. So let's go ahead and work this one out. The question we're answering again is, what does the nurse set the flow rate um, of the IV pump at? So our flow rate is going to be equal to always begin with dose over concentration. So the dose means the dose that's ordered. 
So your dose is 18. Now, concentration. In order to figure out how much, how many units of heparin there are in each one milliliter in this IV bag, I just divide this by this, just like it is. If you divide 25,000 by 500, you'll see that there is 50 units of heparin in each milliliter in that bag. Okay? Go back to the equation, figure out which other components you might need. Do we need the patient's weight? Yeah, we do, because it's ordered units per kilogram per hour. So I take the patient's weight, which is 75 kilograms, and now I have to see, do I need that 60 multiplier? I don't. I don't need it because it's ordered per hour, and remember my flow rate is in milliliters per hour, so I don't need that 60 multiplier. That's my whole equation for heparin. So if I multiply these two things out, I get 18 units times 75, my patient's weight, equals 1350 divided by the concentration, which is 50 units per milliliter. And this tells me that I am going to set my IV pump at 27 milliliters per hour. That's the answer. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do nitroglycerin. I have a nitroglycerin drip. It's ordered to infuse at 15 micrograms per minute. It is mixed 50 milligrams in 500 milliliters. Go back to your equation again and start to build your equation with the components that you need. So our flow rate, as always, always, always begins with dose over concentration. So the dose that's ordered is 15 mics. Now concentration gets a little bit tricky on this one because I told you that it was mixed 50 milligrams in 500 milliliters, but it's ordered in micrograms. So you have to change these milligrams to micrograms before you divide them by the volume that's in the nitroglycerin bag. So if you take 50 times 1,000, you get 50, 0, 0, 0, divided by 500. And that gives me the concentration that tells me how many micrograms there are in each milliliter in that bag, or bottle, actually. If I divide those two, I find that my concentration is 100 micrograms in each milliliter in that bag. So there's my dose over concentration. Go back to the formula. Do I need my patient's weight? I do not, because it's 15 mics per minute. It's not 15 mics per kilo per minute. So I don't need weight. Do I need that 60 multiplier? I do. And the reason I do is because this is in minutes, and remember flow rate is always in milliliters per hour. So I need that 60 multiplier. That's my equation for nitroglycerin. And if I multiply those two things out, I will get, well, let me actually multiply them out. I always need a calculator. It's fine to need a calculator, and it's fine to write down these equations and carry them with you, because the most important thing is that we give the right dose of drugs to patients and that they stay safe, not that we can do math in our heads, especially if you're not good at math like me, because that's how mistakes happen. If I divide those two things out, I get nine milliliters per hour. That's what I set my pump at. Now, I want to illustrate a really important point and a really important part of nursing practice is you need to understand how these drugs are dosed. Because if you had mistakenly factored in this patient's weight and done 15 times his weight, which is 75, times 60, and then divided that by the concentration of 100, you would have gotten an outrageous IV rate of well over 700 milliliters per hour which would have been a dreadful mistake to make on your patient. So please make sure that you understand how things are ordered and that you don't factor in weight unless you need it. And another word to the wise, if you ever are doing this math and you get an answer that tells you to set your IV flow rate at hundreds of milliliters per hour, you have done something wrong. Because powerful drugs like this are generally not infused at really, really high infusion rates. So if you ever get an answer like that, when you're in an exam, redo your math. If you're actually delivering one of these drugs to a patient, please get another nurse to check your math because we can't afford to make mistakes like that. Okay, let's do the last one, and this is probably the most complicated kind that you'll have to do. And this time we are going to do a dopamine drip that's ordered 2.5 micrograms, whoops, sorry, my mistake, micrograms per kilogram per minute. The dopamine is mixed 800 milligrams 
in 500 milliliters. And again, our patient weighs 75 kilograms like always, okay? So let's start from the beginning, and we always start with dose over concentration. So our dose ordered is 2.5 mites. Now with concentration, we're back to the same situation we had with the nitroglycerin. Because it's ordered in micrograms, you have to get your concentration into micrograms. So I need to know how many micrograms there are in each milliliter in that IV fluid bag. And so we do the same thing we did before. You take 800, multiply it by 1,000, add three zeros, and then divide that by the 500 milliliters that are in that bag. And when you divide that out, you'll see that the concentration is actually 1,600 micrograms per milliliter. So that's a little bit trickier. Now, go back to the original equation. Do we need the patient's weight? Yeah, we do. It's ordered in kilos, so it's 75. Do we need that 60 multiplier? Yeah, we do, because that's ordered in minutes. And remember again, our flow rate is always in milliliters per hour, so we need that 60 multiplier. And so if I multiply all this stuff out, it's 2.5 mics times the patient's weight, and then multiply that by 60, and then we're going to divide that by 1,600. And the answer that you get for your flow rate is 7.03 milliliters per hour, which you can round to a whole number of 7 milliliters per hour. Another word to the wise, if you are going to round, and IV pumps can go to one decimal point, make sure you understand the rules of rounding. If it's 7.54, then that 4 just gets dropped off and the answer is 7.5. If it were 7.56, then the 5 gets rounded up to a 6, so you would actually set your IV pump rate at 7.6. So if you're going to round, make sure that you round correctly. Okay, so that is the easy way um, to calculate IV infusion rates. If you have a system that already works for you, use it, ignore this method. I will be posting some practice math questions on your WebCT site uh, with some answers so that you can practice. But you'll see problems like this on every exam, and you'll work through these problems all the time in the simulation lab. So good luck. Thanks.